Welcome back to New England Skilled Trades. Today we're going to do steam boiler sizing. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, this is a, there's a lot that's into it. It could take you a long time to learn how to really size a boiler, a steam boiler, properly. But this is a good uh, this is a good formula here. It's designed by uh, Dan Halloran, who wrote The Lost Out of Steam. Uh, it's a really good book to, to read. He's got quite a few books on Steam. A lot of articles out there on the internet that he's uh, he's written or people have wrote about him. So I suggest you uh, look to see what he's got to say about size residential and, and uh, single and two pipe steam system, really. But we're gonna get we're gonna get to the basics here. So we're gonna do something a little bit better than just replacing what was there. A little bit more accurate. So a lot of variables have changed over the years. Uh, cause, uh, you know, people adding and subtracting radiators, insulation, pipe insulation, house insulation, people shutting their windows when they sleep, a lot of stuff. So that's why we're going to use the formula that we, we're going to use today. Uh, this formula takes these things into consideration the best out of all the formulas that are out there. Alright, so we got to look at the radiator chart. Uh, one thing you got to realize is uh, one square foot of steam, one square foot of equivalent direct radiation, EDR, equals 240 BTU uh, British thermal units per hour at 70 degrees with one PSIG of steam in the radiator. We'll need to know this in a minute. You don't have to remember everything verbatim, but we're just going over this real quick. Next, we need to read the radiator chart so we can find out our uh, square feet and change it to MBTUs, thousands of BTUs, all right? So we use this thin tube water type radiator in our example. All right, so here we go. Here's your thin tube water type radiators. Here's your height and inches. This is how many tubes you're using. Three, four, five, six, seven. And then it tells you how many square feet per section. The easiest section is this way. All right, so this first radiator here is 26 inches tall. And it's a three tube. So there's your tubes going all along this way in the front or the back, depending on the way you're looking at it. So 26 inches tall. Here's your height right there. Three tube. If you get 2.11 per section, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. Then you go around, you do that to all the radiators. So it takes a little bit of time when you're in a house, but it, it pays off in the end because you get a more equally sized uh, boiler, a more properly sized boiler. You imagine you're going to create the steam that can actually fill these radiators and the steam main. You're not going to run out by the time it gets to this last radiator, and you're not going to uh, short cycle the system and blast water out of these vents either. Alright, so you go around all these radiators, you measure them, you gotta get the height, you gotta figure out what kind of radiator you're using. Typically you'll see either um, column style or tube style. And you just go by the chart. And down here, US Boilers, Smithfield Supply, and uh, Rhode Island Columbia Heating Supply. They're all good resources for finding either out of date radiators or odd, odd sized. Um, just some more literature on on our radiators for you. If you can't find the radi radiator on the charts I give you here. Um, so you add those all up. So you get your three tube, your six tube, your five tube, you have a three tube. You got all your heights here. 26, 32, 20, 32. The amount of square feet of steam per section, the number of sections, and then your total. Is your total square feet of steam per radiator? All four of these. This is a small radiator, this is a small house, um, 53 square feet of steam. It's just for an example. It's really not, uh, it's really not what you're really going to see out there. It's really, this is a really small example, but just for learning. All right, so you add it all up, you take your total square feet of steam which is 53, multiply by 1.5, that's your pickup factor. 
this is the variable I was talking about earlier as far as things changing over the years. Use this pickup factor. Here's your total, 53 times 1.5. And then you want to multiply it by 240 to, to get your MBH. Thousands of BTUs an hour. So it's 19,080. I'm down to 19 MBH. Then make sure you select your boiler from the dough heating capacity. Because we're using this pickup factor here, you go off the dough heating capacity and you'll get yourself the size boiler you want. Like I said, this is really small. We'll take a look at a real uh, boiler plate to burn them. Here's your dough heating capacity. This is more of a normal size house here. 396 square feet of steam. This is off a real boiler, all right? If you're using oil, 1.5 gallons per hour, so it's a decent sized boiler. Nothing crazy, but probably average for a steam boiler. Not the smallest, definitely not the biggest. All right, we'll look at that one more time. Count your radiators, match it on the chart. Don't get your sections and your tubes mixed up. Three tube and section. Tube, column, section, they're all different things. Get your height, figure out what you're looking at. Multiply it to get your square feet per section. And if you multiply it by that 1.5, you don't have to worry about the steam main and uh, the insulation that's there or not there. All right. Write us at nestedvideos at gmail.com. Join us, connect, LinkedIn, subscribe, tell a friend. Until next time, thank you.